visiting Coquan, Honduras. Come along with us. We arrived here in Honduras. We are in a place called Copan, which is gonna be beautiful. You'll see tomorrow morning. But what's crazy is right now, what you see on the news is that everybody's leaving Honduras and trying to illegal, illegally get into the United States. Well, tonight we crossed our first border as illegal immigrants into Honduras. <laughs> it's true. We arrived at the border and it was closed. Online it says it's open 24 hours, but it's actually not true. Three months ago, they closed the border starting at 9 p.m. That was reading an article from 2016. Still, it's only three months ago that they closed the border. So the border is closed at 9 p.m. So we had to like ask the um, police officers, like, can you please let us in and we'll come back and do the stamping tomorrow morning. They let us come through. So we weren't allowed to drive. We had to walk through, but can you believe it? So we are technically, illegally right now in Honduras. Good morning from Honduras. So this is the view we woke up to this morning here. We're staying at a place called Casa Doña Elena. And look at this, so it looks like it's six in the morning, but it's actually, it's around eight. You can hear the birds singing and before there's the roosters doing their song. But it sounds like a little busy village down below, but we're not quite sure yet. Now off to breakfast. I'm sure it's gonna be one of these yummy, typical breakfasts. I think breakfast the same in Honduras as Guatemala and Nicaragua. Like, I think it's gonna be the same breakfast. So it is the same breakfast as the other places. The only difference is the avocado style of egg, but that's the same. It's an egg. And they just brought us the most amazing pineapples and papayas. Pineapples. Is there apples in there? And the, uh, the pineapples, they taste really yummy. They're more sweet than the ones that we had in Nicaragua. I learned that there's two types of pineapples. One that's, well, just not as sweet. So the, the sweet one is the Hawaiian one. And the other one's more white and it's just less sweet. Feels as though we're in a rainforest, but the, the mist is all lifting up right now off the little mountains here in front of us. You hear those roosters? They were making that sound at 5 a.m. Oh my goodness, it's so like loud. So we woke up this morning to the most beautiful day. The sun is coming out. The roosters were making their sound at 5 a.m. So they woke me up and uh, it's just gonna be gorgeous. So yesterday was a little bit overcast all day long. You hear the roosters? All right, they stopped now. Okay, and uh, anyway, last night was uh, just relaxing. We went through the village. It's very safe here because it's so touristy that um, it just feels really safe. There's lots of cafes and restaurants to check out and uh, we enjoyed a really nice dinner, great pricing and um, the tuk-tuk rides here are about a dollar each to get in and around um, the streets. And the streets are crazy because they, they go down and up and it's bumpy and so the girls felt like they were on a roller coaster. It's a lot of fun. And um, they have a really nice market. I'm not sure if it's only Friday, Saturday, Sundays because last night was Friday night. Um, but it's really nice. They have all the jewelry out and some of the unique things that they sell from the area. So just really beautiful. In case you're wondering, we did go back to the border and get our passports properly stamped. So we were legally in Honduras at this point. We're crossing a bridge. This is the new bridge that they're building here so the road doesn't connect. 
So we're walking across it like this. The walk is a little bit longer than we thought. So we're carrying papayas, watermelons, and bananas because we get uh, a little bit of a special privilege, privilege today where we're bringing the fruit to feed the birds. But uh, it's quite a long walk. I think we're getting close here. But yeah, we had to cross the bridge and then walk down this road for quite a while. Listen, you can hear all the birds. There they are inside there. There we are now at Macaw Mountain where we are going to see beautiful, beautiful birds just like this one. Four different kinds of parrots. Some can be smaller, some can be bigger. These ones are easy to identify if they're female or male because of their feathers. The males have red little feathers when they open the wings too, and female stems. So here at Macaw Mountain, what they do is they actually rescue all different kinds of parrots. So there are the four different kinds. The macaw are the biggest ones. And uh, what happens is, is the different kinds of parrots, people often will have them as pets, but then sometimes they get bored of them or different types of parrots maybe don't repeat the same sounds as humans do. So they kind of have them for a while, they even clip their wings and then they're bored of them. So this whole sanctuary is to rehabilitate the parrots, to teach them again how to fly, to teach them again how to eat properly because they don't even know how to eat unless it's off of a plate because they're so used to humans and such. And so they bring them here and once they rehabilitate them and train them to be birds again, they actually get released back into the wild. So when you go to see the Copan ruins, you actually can see the macaw birds there because they have released about 56 of them there, which is really cool. And those same birds come back here every once in a while to socialize because they, they, it's home right for them. So, and uh, here they are, they're just massive. Macaw bird is actually the national bird of Honduras and only a few short years ago it was an endangered species so they're constantly trying to rise the level of reproduction so if it weren't for places like here Macaw Mountain or a couple one in Mexico one in Costa Rica um, they would probably be extinct. So. And something that's crazy is that people they just think that they would eat seeds right like people sometimes give seeds so when like they go to the market, they give them seeds just to sell, but that's actually not good for them because it's like eating dessert and it's fattening for them actually. And it's actually better to give them fruits and vegetables, but like lettuce and some other foods actually are harmful to them. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it causes a lot of problem, like heart problems for them. Yeah. And then they get stressed out if they don't have it and they start plucking their feathers. So it's really bad for them. That's what they yeah. do when they're stressed. So. Crazy stuff for learning, it's huh? It's not really good. <laughs> so this one is a king vulture. So they eat dead meat, like they eat dead animals that they find in the forest. So they're actually quite good for the earth. So they eat the dead things that are on the floor and stuff so that they don't produce bacteria and then get other animals sick. So it's a good animal. And they're endangered, right? Yeah. So when the pairs get stressed, they basically pluck the feathers. And so these ones are all birds that are were stressed and that they all pluck. So we're gonna see some that have like no feathers on their chest. What? Like maybe this one, because the tail sure. takes longer to grow. Yeah, he's missing his tail, this guy. And, and when they arrive... over there that's missing all its chest, like the whole spot. There's some people that are very superstitious and they they think that this may kill, this owl may kill one of their family members, but it only is that big, like very small. If an owl like that is seen near their house, they believe that someone in the family might die. But it's just like so small. 
Yeah, so what happens is the people try to kill the bird. They try to kill the owl because they're afraid of it. So it endangers the owls. Here we are, girls, what are we gonna do? Cutting all the fruit up. Look at, and it smells so delicious in the here. Mm. Yep. Just, yeah, Protecting this no spread, no germs to these poor little birdies. We had such a cool opportunity to go behind the scenes, cut up all the fruit for all the birds, and then even go on a special tour into the cages to feed them all. with all these birds, they're everywhere. The girls are feeding them over here in a distance. They're pretty hungry, aren't they, girls? They're super hungry. Cool. How was it? Crazy experience or what? <laughs> now that they're all being fed, it's all good, huh? It's unbelievable. I walked in and they're all like, wow! Now they're all eating, so it's all good, but look at that. Amazing. Yeah, they just wanted food. That's why they were all excited. Should we just leave you here for the week and uh, come no. back and get you? No? <laughs> just joking. about to go and it's called the interactive area where you can do pictures and they can come on you and they just find their fruit. Mm -hmm. Look at these guys. <laughs> They're grooming each other. Right? <laughs> to say a really fast thank you for all the people here at Macaw Mountain. We had such a fun time participating, learning about the birds, and we're going to share and spread the word. Right, girls? Yes. We're on another tuk-tuk oh, ride on our way to the ruins. Oh all right, we're now at the Copan Ruins, and to come in, I'm going to tell you the pricing. It's $75.00. Uh, for five so 15 each to go see the ruins and another $15 to go to the underground tunnel and city So that's what we're going to go see right now And um, they do bird feeding as well because those birds that get released get released here and they actually feed them over here too So if you're here anytime around four o'clock They do a bird feeding and they it's like a bird show if you will because you get to observe the birds eating their food This is a map here of um, how big it is. So we are right there and you can see here, it probably doesn't look big on a map, but it's actually pretty massive. So we're gonna go see all these different things. So it was literally a city. If you were 
living back then, the Copan ruins would be considered a Paris. And uh, Tikal, where we're gonna be going to next, would have been considered New York City. So there was about 25,000 people who actually lived here. So they were very sophisticated. They were able to obviously feed all those people and uh, house all those people and probably entertain all those people. And um, they, they were sophisticated in many ways, as you will soon see. But um, they studied for years all the different stars and planets and they were able to do almost like a farmer's almanac. They could predict um, crops being grown and different things like that. So very high level. And um, oh, well, I'll tell you more about it when we go in. What Copan is actually famous for that everybody sees pictures of is the hieroglyphic stairways. So we're definitely gonna bring you to see that. We're actually gonna bring you everywhere, but this is the uh, map of it all. So let's get started. You see is the birds here, look at that. Cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Another thing that's not good for birds is bread. In Switzerland, all the grandparents and all the people, they get bread, which is actually not good. No, it's not good for their digestion, is it? Mm -hmm. questions we're asking ourselves and you might be asking yourselves as well is like who were these people who were the Mayas who built this whole city and um, you know what was their religion like and where did they get all their knowledge from and like I don't know like what was their complex religion and what did they get, do for fun and um, all those questions what's crazy is um, they actually had written out all the numbers and they were able to write things and a lot of the books that they found, believe it or not, were burnt by the Spanish. So they took a lot of the books, and I think there's only like four left, but luckily they were smart and they didn't just write it on like paper that could be destroyed. They wrote it in the rocks. And so you can see, and archeologists were able to study all the different things and see what they were writing down and understand a little bit more about who these people were and their culture and their religions and their beliefs and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool because um, we can learn so much from that, right? So as you can see here, a lot of it was sculpted and just basically, if you will, wrote out onto the rocks. So one thing we're gonna try and do, girls, is their number system was really cool. So a dot meant one, and then two dots is two, three dots is three, and so on and so forth, and then five was a line. So you can count their numbers like that. So we're gonna see if we can find it or discover in any of the rocks that we see, dots and lines and stuff like that, because that would be numbers. to them because if somebody picked one up on the floor they would have to make sure it wasn't one that they plucked it off and they could feather? tell by yeah the feather they could tell because um either it had a little bit of blood or some skin and if they did take it from the, the macau bird well then they would chop off one of their fingers so and what happened if people had many feathers were they considered really important kind of yes, like rulers it was worth so much, right? Yeah. Yeah, and also if they killed the bird to get the feather, then they would kill the person. So if you want to know where Copan is, it's basically in the western side of Honduras, right beside the Guatemalan border. and. Um, the Copan ruins are only about a kilometer and a half or so away from the little town of Copan. So very close, you could walk or take a tuk-tuk. And um, it's at about 700 meters uh, above sea level. So today we're having beautiful weather. So basically it's huge. There's about 50 acres here of different temples and altars and ball courts and uh, all different kinds of things. Of course, the 
uh, famous stairway that we just showed you, as well as several plazas. And this uh, city was established in the year um, AD 426, so very early on. And then um, people left literally in the 900s and um, it kind of just like vanished and became all covered up and was basically like a jungle, if you will, just uh, totally overgrown. And in the year 1576, a guy named Diego Garcia wrote about it, um, so discovered it, and then of course many other people after him came and started, uh, you know, uncovering everything and discovering all the different ruins. Look at this. Well, we are going to go down into the tunnels. Right now we are about to enter the tunnels and go discover apparently there's a second um, city if you will because they built the above city above the underground one so it seems hotter in here Ooh, we were hoping it was gonna be cool to cool off it's humid oh let's go see that's cooler no, yeah that's a bit cooler it's really well illuminated that's nice So this here was like their bathroom, as you can see. They had the drainage. System. They had drainage systems that would go all the way into the river, Copan River. So it was kind of for the elite, right? Mm -hmm. The we other thing is, is like, here. yeah, they used to live down here. So Chloe. this this would have been open, and uh, then they built on top of it. We also saw this in some of our videos in Europe too, because they would often be uh, like sometimes six meters below, built on top. And six and under are free. Yes. You know what Whoa. this is? This is a replica of what is underground. So this is when they excavated in those tunnels we went through yesterday. This is what they discovered when they were excavating this underneath. Is It was surprising. It was just a building. Nothing inside to see. I will never try to fool you. I'm one heartbeat away from going mad. Go and you look like that. About a kilometer away from the main ruins, they found a whole bunch of sculptures of totes. And it represents rain and fertility. Still today, the Maya women still have it on their blouses, or their shirts, and their dresses. This could be so complete. Something I found unusual is that in the bathrooms, even if they get a whole bunch of tourists, they don't have soap. But luckily, my mom always carries a bar of soap. Loving you is all I wanted. I'm wide open for a love affair Girl, when you look like that Closer, closer I'ma get closer to you, yeah It's amazing to think that they built all these things this many years ago Yeah, it's crazy Isn't it? Yeah And then they had the god of the underworld And they had all these different sacrifices and religious ceremonies that they used to do Something you must try while you're here is ice cream rolls. So it's basically ice cream and rolls. We're gonna go check it out. We're getting Cookie Monster. Mm, let's go see how he makes it.
So there's two other museums, and this one's more of like an ar archaeological museum, and there's also another one where you watch like a 12-minute film. Yeah, and they're both in the square. This yeah. is the statue we were looking for yesterday, though. Their first king and ruler mm, yes. with the funny Huge glasses. Eyes and then so just to give you perspective where we are, here's the main square. That's where the one museum is. And the other one is over there, Kitty Corner, in a distance. So this here is where we stayed for the last few nights here in Copan. It's called Casa Doña Elena. I highly recommend it. It has a really yummy breakfast, good comfortable beds. It's nice and clean. And it has a really nice kind of quiet area that overlooks the beautiful rolling hills behind it. Thanks for watching tour of Copan and Juice. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a big thumbs up. And comment down below where you're watching from. We love to know. See you next time. Bye. Bye.